Hello all you here as villains and innocent bystanders. Welcome to another episode of an Angel and a Unicorn comic book reviews. I'm Alan the Unicorn and with me today is... Raylan the Hyena. You gotta speak up, girl. Raylan the Hyena. You gotta got be loud. Sorry. And obnoxious. You got the obnoxious part right. So we will not. be spoiling the books for the week. Um, if you haven't read your books, you may want to take a break and read first. Or if you want to be spoiled, that's fine too. Please continue on with us. Eventually, I'll have the descriptions of the, uh, the times of each book um, in the descriptions. Uh, if you can, like, share, and subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it because we'd love to start a conversation with more and more people as much as I can possibly get. Um, and But until then, let's go ahead and spoil the books for the week. Okay. What do you think? Where are you going to go first? What's your first pick? <clears throat> first pick is Truth and Earth. Eh. Okay. That was not the right one. That's stiletto. Yeah. So here you go. You had one job, Alan. <laughs> you are the you had one job to tap the picture and you messed it up. Alright. So the writer is Writer is Vida Ayala. And, and the, the artist. artist is German Perilessa. I think it's German. Same thing. Carlotta. And their little the little accent symbol is uh, make it German, I think. Mon is the name. But I'm not for sure. I, I may be totally butchering it, but we apologize. As we always do every show, we apologize for the pronunciation. So anyways, go ahead. Fire away. So your it starts with Sylark talking to the guy in charge. Sporge. Forge, mm -hmm. and they're talking about this ship, and <clears throat> and she's talking about reminding him why he's here and what they stand for. Because Forge wants to turn Bishop into this rehabilitation program. He thinks he can really rehabilitate him and send him out in the world. And Falk's like, "Stick to what you know, you know, stay in your own lane, buddy." So he goes through some files and stuff, and then. Bishop tries to ask around, ask about, like, the different paper. He's trying. I'm so sorry. It's okay. He's trying to ask about the paper that, from the last issue. Yeah, and he had the notes. And people are being rude. So then he asks Polaris, and Polaris is giving him the silent treatment. Cause of, and so Gabby talks to him and tells him about how it's, his fault she's there and mm -hmm, cause how he turned her in and like how Gabby told her something but she didn't expect her to believe it that she's in a straight jacket but yeah. she always looks like she's in a straight jacket she's got her arms crossed like she's in a straight jacket that's why oh, she, she <laughs> I just realized it yeah she said she walks around like that see why see why she walks around like that She's convinced she's in a straight jacket because someone told her that yeah. then that when she woke up may have been me, but <laughs> to but to be fair, I didn't think she'd actually believe me. So yeah. she thinks she's in a straight jacket. Polaris does, yes. And so she always has her arms like that. Yeah. And then he tries to talk to Hank, who beats him up again. Yep, they fight. And they fight, and then, um, and then he's like, "You need to stay in your own lane, or you might yep. d discover something that you wish you didn't." So he and basically warned him. He's like, "Look, you need to stay where you're. You need to don't yeah, worry about so it." Then they move on. What was that with? That's part of the good thing I turned off. Now I'm bringing up the red screen. Can you do it for me? I don't know. It's okay. So. Then he talks to Moonstar right. about all these dreams and stuff and how he's remembering. And Moonstar's talking to him and how she remembers being parts of the new mutants with like Wolfsbane mm -hmm. and then well and magic and and so then this yellow haired girl So it's that's Shard and it is Bishop's Shard. sister from the future. Shard, she shows up and starts talking to him about um, and, like, Moonstar runs away for some reason. And so him and her start talking, and, um, so 
she's trying to she's just kind of telling him that you know he's he needs to stay in focused and that you know he needs to remember that he's not um the leader anymore. right right and so she's kind of how she's trying to warn him and he's fighting like these visions of himself yeah he's fighting different versions of himself yeah and but then, they end up being a hallucination, and it ends up being he's fighting the guards. Yeah, and so they knocked him out, mm-hmm. and well, they actually took him out. And then the note is under the pillow, so he goes back to his thing, his cell, his cell. So what are you thinking? What do you think? Because you read the first one, didn't you? You read the Prisoner X number one, right? Oh. Oh, you are not starting me on anything already. We just started. <gasps> You guys, we're gonna start drugging your drinks. Get you some sleep. So, I what did you think? Good, but I had to wake up to make sure I read the book because I don't want to be like some people and have to read it when we get to the house. <laughs> That's I'll stay on top of you. Don't worry. I'll try to keep you guys focused. So yes. So, but you, so you read the first one. So, you, did you like this issue, uh, the continuation? Yeah. Yeah, I thought I it was pretty it. good. And this is actually one of the a few Age of the X Men books that I'm actually enjoying because it's not dealing with the relationship aspect of the world of the Age of X Men. Because all the other ones are dealing with this relationship aspect, and this one is actually one that it's not. And so, I kind of like that it's different and do something a little bit different with the book. But my favorite one this. I'm so sorry. My favorite one this week was Domino Pops. Well, we'll get there. But what did you think of this one? Good. Yeah. What about it just um? Keeps coming. What about um? Harley Quinn. No. What did you think about the art? Good. Yeah, the art was pretty good. <laughs> it's bad. So, what did you rate it? I would rate it. Um, what are the numbers? One through five. <laughs> <laughs> three. Yeah. Three, I, four. I, I would say four out of five. I actually really enjoyed this book. I yeah, like the characters. I, I gotta the say The art four. was really fun. Scratch yeah. that a four. Four out of five four. unicorn horns. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. All right. So let's do my next one. I'm going to do section zero. It is by Image Comics. Um, the writer and uh, the creators are Carl Kessel and Tom Gromit. Also, Tom Gromit did the art. So, it was. This one was a little interesting. Um, it's a number one issue. It's a little bit different of a of a, a premise that kind of seems familiar, almost like a Fantastic Four y kind of book. But it starts off with uh, these farmers are finding their sheep are all dead and they're hunting down this kind of beast. Uh, then it switches to uh, this. This guy in the UN gets this message about trying to help somebody with this beast, that this creature that's killing all these sheep, and he writes back that he can't really help. The UN can't get involved, but he takes the message and he passes it on, and you find out to who later. Then it cuts to um, a uh, like war zone. It's this one guy with a sword. He's running through trying to get everybody to go. Uh, uh, he's trying to find this thing, but you don't really know what it is. He distracts the crowds, and he finds this bug character. So it's this, it's this person with like a, a, a uh, like almost an ant head and like these, all these arms coming out of his back and he's got like a little, you know, it's like, it's kind of gross, but it's pretty cool. I think he looks pretty neat. Like the art is really good. Tom Gromit's pretty decent, pretty good artist. Um, but while he's fighting uh, this uh, thing, uh, this girl busts in with this like cool big giant gun, very 80s reminiscent. <laughs> Raylan. And I'm then, so uh, and then, so she uh, shoots the little thing and kind of traps the bug creature, and then uh, they go on to uh, uh, like find out that it's actually they can communicate with the bug guy, um, and when they do, they he kind of starts trying to get them, uh, help them out a little bit. So they all try to run and they they get ready to escape, but this army stops them and they start to shoot at them and. Uh, what they she calls in like reinforcements and ends up being like an alien with a ufo the ufo the alien comes down he uh, transports everybody up into the ship and they all take off and the army's just sitting there kind of dumbfounded uh when they get into the ship though the uh, the bug guy he he tends to uh, uh molt and all of his skin falls off and like everybody's like oh it smells gross and he's like 
don't worry, it'll disappear in a little bit. He goes, sorry, the smell will not, but at least the skin will disappear. So all the skin he molts off kind of just evaporates. And he ends up being this little boy that uh, this happens to. And he says when it happens, it happens for like an hour. And so his uh, um, he had gotten this weird tattoo. They kind of tell his backstory about how he got this weird tattoo by this um, uh, Chinese magic shop place. And every time he touches it and scratches it, it itches. And so he scratches it and itches it. And, and he uh, becomes this bug creature for an hour. Uh, so they ask him if he wants to join him to see if they can find a cure. And so they say, what? Well, he's like, yeah, I'll stay with you and see if we can find something. He goes, I'll help you out. Um, then they go to this place where they meet the guy from the UN who had uh, previously said, no, I'm not going to help with the, the sheep incident. But then they um, are going to he gives it to them he's like hey some stuff's happening we need to go figure it out that guy looks like stan lee eh, i don't know he's a little heavier set i think uh stan lee looks a little more svelte than uh, than him but maybe i could see the resemblance tribute tribute there you go so he uh calls in he calls in a um a uh little another group that's kind of like a secret um looks like they're covering up what the other group is doing um and so he sets back to the to the main group who like i guess that are very reminiscent of like some fantastic four people and he the alien creature he goes and like vanishes into this mountain and when he does he's like hey he goes i found this thing and they're like what do you mean we didn't find a thing so he kind of uses this almost like telekinetic abilities and uncovers this beast that looks like a I don't know, like a, a dragon man creature. Like, he's got this big fin on his head. He's got these little scales on his arm. So, I'm curious to see what that's going to turn out to be. So, yeah. Um, which, I thought it was actually kind of a fun book. I really enjoyed the um, uh, kind of go back and forth with the, with the characters. The kind of premise is kind of fun. Um, it's a little more superhero team book, which I love. The art was really good, so I really liked it. So Section Zero was, uh, I'd probably give it a four out of five unicorn horns. I'm curious to see where it's going to go. I'm curious if they're going to do like a more Fantastic Four kind of thing, or if they're going to end up being more of a, um, uh, like a science-y book, like kind of a science adventure, or um, what they're going to go with it. So I'll definitely pick up the second issue and see what, see what that entails and brings. All right, if you can make it through the yawns, what's your next one? Um... I'll do Harley Quinn. Okay. So. And which number is it? Harley Quinn what? Number. 60? 60. And so she's in this lab. Real quick, they don't have the, they don't have the artist, so we'll, we'll call it, we'll, we'll get them, once we get to the page, we'll call it the artists and, and writers. So she is trapped in this facility. Mm-hmm. And I realized something she has these guns that actually match her hair and they actually match the side pink <laughs> pink blue yeah. blue so that was pretty cool and so she's in this lab like they were made for her yes <laughs> so she's in the lab she's fighting off these monsters and then she goes to a flashback she broke into this lab for a cure for her mom who has cancer um and then it go cut so it shows oh, just so and so it goes from one flashback into another flashback. Flashback within a flashback within a flashback. Yeah, and so then it shows you she gets locked in and she's secured. And so she's back now. She's still fighting them off. More fighting off, more. yeah, fighting off those little, like, whatever. They so look then, like little alien creatures. Yeah, so then she goes in this room and she sees Joker. Or what she think is, she thinks is Joker. So she runs after him. And that is not an appleasing Joker. He's creepy. That's a creepy yeah, one. Yeah, they are. Yeah, all of them are kind of creepy. Um, so she finds Batman then, or who she thinks is Batman, and so then she tries to rip off his face, and apparently it's not Batman. It was just another. Um, I can't remember what. I'll like a doppelganger. Later. Yeah. Yeah, and then she sees her mom, and she, or what she thinks is her mom, and she becomes this gross yeah, alien. Yeah, like the alien comes out of her mouth and 
And then they throw Murray and Dur, yeah. who look like Starfire. Yep, I, I assume they're probably from the same planet. Yeah, it says in that first, yeah. in the other book yeah, that she's, she's from Tamaran. She's from Tamaran. She, and what I like is she looks like that one Harley who has the roller skating. She yeah. looks like the roller skating Harley, except as the Tamaran. You yeah, know? I can see that, different coloring. Because she has roller skates yeah. too. And then her jacket, like, so she comes and she's talking to Harley. Kind and of builds her up and kind of like, you know, you can do it. I then, know you can do it. And then Harley's like, it's not supposed to be like this. And she's like, you willingly agreed. So yeah. it's on you. You have to do it anyways. Yeah. And so she's like, and then she mentions about how she, she's, people have died. Mm-hmm. Um, and. So Harley freaks out and she's like, you never told me that people died. So then she gives her a nice prep talk. Then she disappears. And then she goes through the control room into yeah, this Harley's like, place. I can do it. I can do it. And so she goes in there and she finds this big alien. It looks like a jellyfish almost. Yeah. And you see all the different Harleys. Yeah. The roller skating one, the beach one, yeah. or no, bombshell, I believe. Yeah, bombshell. That's the bombshell, the roller skating, and then you got classic and Suicide Squad Harley. Yep. And so then you see, she she says it's alive, and so it taps into her brain and is telling her what is going on right. and all that. But it's like using really small like words and so yeah it's like you know like abducted, family, family. Abducted. Yep. And she starts figuring oh and Harleen and so and then overreaction and so the guy says that it's you, you it, all those bugs they're your self defense system. Yeah. It's they're like, a part of you. Right. You're terrified. That's mm-hmm. why the bugs are so terrifying. So, um, that's why it chose all of them and stuff. So all the Joker and the Batman and Batman and, and their mom and all the different yeah. Harleys were like, yeah. And then it's the she way says, the, the con- thing was and then it says, contact, please. And so she figures out <laughs> the system. And she's like, I'm gonna get you home. And she and the computer starts talking, and she realizes how advanced it is and she's like trying to figure it out and it's like antesis or and i think she says she needs one of these and she and it says you wish to reverse the quantum in kirsten because she's like talking to the computer yeah, yeah. and they're like having she's, a conversation yeah, yeah. She's like, <laughs> and she's like um what what is it that like an undo and it's and it says something like that yeah the Quantum. computer's like kind of talking to her it's kind of funny and then she hits the override and then it says gratitude mm-hmm. oh and so she says to you and she's talking to her mom and telling her about how good it was and then miranda comes down to observe and she gets her charm. next gem she asks her mom if she could have chicken wings and she's coming back and, and then, then it says, da, 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 da. and then I really want to read this one really bad. It says, it's, she says, I burned and they never came for me. And now June Moon burned away, but yeah. I survived. So it's the Enchantress. Now there is only the Enchantress. Very dramatic. I like it. <laughs> so now that's probably going to be the next. She's a redhead, though. Well, because the Enchantress originally, you know, may have been, because June Moon was uh, uh, dark-headed. Quit. Should sit in a, I need to read it. I will no, have my Shh. weapon to mankind. And my All weapon right. is Harley Quinn. There. So uh, that's probably going to be her next trial, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she must. Um, She's got to defeat the uh, Enchantress. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to do, my next book is going to be Bronze Age Boogie, number one. Oh, we never did. Hang on, before we go too far, let's let's find out who did the um, art art and stuff. So the writer was Sam Humphreys, and the pencils was Sam Barassi, Sammy Barassi. So I give it a six. Yeah, it was pretty good. I liked it. I thought it was kind of fun. 
I'm not quite sure if this is the best story for as far as like Harley goes because it's kind of weird. Like I feel like they're just doing trying to do something with her, but I mean like it's fun. I like the story that the, she's funny. It's you know the writing the the dialogue is really cute. So I enjoy it. It's four out of five, you know, because it is a fun book. But I, I I'm not quite sure why they're doing this with Harley. It's kind of a weird premise for her yeah the like little trial yeah it's just kind of odd so bronze age boogie number one um let's see there's a couple different uh there's Stuart moore is the writer and alberto poncielli is an artist and then for the part one is tyrone finch in morissette morissette and the other, there's two other stories, Bryce Ingman and Sean Crystal and Kick W and Derek Robertson. So a couple different people have their hands in this, but... How, how many pages is it? I don't know. I think it's just a normal book. And so uh, it's kind of set in like different time periods, which is kind of a little odd. It goes back and forth. So it starts off in 75, and they've got the... There's the Go-Go Gollum, Doc Lunar, and uh, Madam Ape. And Madam Ape is in a wheelchair. And then it cuts to uh, 3,000 or 4,000 years earlier. And it's kind of this, uh, they're fighting these undead creatures. Dinosaurs. This wizard. Yeah, it's like an undead dinosaur. and But it's like they're kind of like barbarians. And then the main. So yeah. they have the, the main guy who's kind of like the um, uh, chieftain and then his daughter. And mm. so they're kind of fighting their way to through all these people. To get to this with these wizards that has this big giant gem t- in it they don't quite make it they have to retreat so in it uh then it shows the there's another um the dad and the, and the daughter have kind of like a little talk about like uh strategies and so you know they talk about how you know this will help and he's he's really proud of her and he really wants her to work hard and she's like you know i just have okay sword skills maybe i'm not the best so it's kind of like this little back and forth, quit, you know, kind of a relationship connection. Um, and then it, he leaves and she starts talking about um, this box of different trinkets. And there's all this, like, a, there's a, a pick in it, like, for your hair. And um, with her is the sniffer ape. And so he, he's kind of, he talks about there being different t- uh, apes from different times. And they all have, like, a... a time agency and but things are breaking down and so he's stuck in this world um but there's ones throughout that are different places so they have um all of a sudden then this uh aliens attack and so the chieftain and then the barbarians and the daughter are trying to stop these aliens um but then all of a sudden the daughter is t- transported to the 70s um where she is uh she's kind of come to contact where the aliens are invading again uh, in that era too and so it talks about the uh, cuts back to the original people with the Goto Gollum and the the ape girl, and Madam they're all ape, yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Ape, and they're all kind of talking, like kind of getting together and trying to figure things out. And so she figures out that you know that she's talking about the kind of the ape space station or uh, time travel people, and um, it kind of gets a little jumbled for a little bit. But it's interesting. Uh, then they have a little backstory. The backstory there's a, or there's a uh, a story in the back of the book, which is about this uh, bear. Um, he's sent into he's getting trained to go into space, and it's this pilot that wants to go into space, but the the they won't let him until they know it's safe. And so this pilot's really mad at this woman because he thinks this woman is, loves this bear more than him, and he's like she's like maybe I do. And so they send the bear up into space, and all of a sudden they, they lose communication, and he comes back down, and this, the bear has uh, the bear can talk. So it, it was uh, it, interesting. It was a different type of uh, book. I'm not quite sure where they're going to go with it. Uh, there's really not a clear premise. I'm not for sure if like they're they're going to focus more on the the barbarian girl being brought back into the, or brought into the future or they're going to focus on the times like if they're going to jump around and into different time frames i'm not for sure if i will read number two i don't know if they did enough to kind of pique my interest because i i was almost a little bit too confused to be interested and so um yeah i'm not for sure we'll see 
maybe if I catch it again, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, grab number two and see how uh, see if that you know see if that cements it for me. But it was a little confusing. So what all is the two worth? So they're there or in that bag? This is the one. These ones over here. But okay, because that is a lot in that bag. I think yep. that was your four. <laughs> that was my last week. So I would give it a three, probably a two out of five unicorn horns, three out of five, somewhere 2.5 maybe, just because it was interesting, but I don't think it quite, uh, I didn't understand it enough to uh, want to read the next issue. Um, but if I catch it, I will and see if that changes, but I, I didn't care for it myself. So if you did, I wonder, I'm curious to see who would, uh, like what kind of audience it would, it would, um, lean towards, but I'm not for sure if it was my cup of tea, so. Alright, last book for you. And then you will read yours. So, it starts in a flashback talking about Outlaw. So, do you, do you want to talk about who, who wrote it? Or who did it? No. What, even what book we're talking about? <laughs> no. Okay, let's we're start doing, there. We're, it's Domino Hotshot. Um, number two. Number two. And the writer is Gail Simon. Simone. Simone. Artist is David Baladean. Or Dean. Whatever you want to say. Baladean. So they're in a flashback of Outlaw. I think that's what her name is. Mm -hmm. And so it's talking about them. And. So Outlaw had been got some of that green stuff on her hands and right now they're talking to Deadpool and so it's kind of about her, it, it starts off with her kind of talking about how she, she was like loving the, like, yeah like how much she was she was by a loner and then all of a sudden she started becoming friends and now Deadpool's here so she has to protect her friends and, and she so, kind of go ahead and so Deadpool and She's got the big wide eyes so she can see everything and all that from the thing. And um, Deadpool's being himself. True that. And he's like, lady, you're just making me feel less bad about treating you as well. And because Black Widow's threatening him. Yeah, Black Widow's threatening him and, and so she doesn't like that. And then he has to use a pun or whatever. You all get a slim sack lunch with a beef down sandwich. 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 Mm -hmm. And then he's like, hey, sack lunch, I just bought that. <laughs> so he gets shot and beat up and is getting punched and all that. Right. He fights all the all of yeah. them. They're kind of beating him up. And so then as they're beating him up, he's like, frustrated and he's get and he almost killed uh that one girl bear claw bear claw oh, isn't that what it is? i think that's her name the one the girl from wakanda yeah yeah the girl from wakanda um said something Keep right going. i'll look and so he almost kills her and then domino starts talking to her and is her name nina is that how you say domino's name uh -huh. nina nina, yep. nina. And so, uh, and he calls, apparently her name is Atlas Nina. Bear, that's her name. Atlas yeah. Bear. Yeah, Atlas Bear. He tries to yeah. hurt Atlas Bear, or kill him, all that. And then Nina. And then Nina is what he calls her. So, they're talking, and he, she's trying to tell him that it's okay, and he's like. She's kind of trying to talk him down. Yeah. Like, take a break. And, <laughs> like, um. And so he's like, but I don't have a choice. And he's being all upset or mm -hmm. dubby downer. Yep. Um, and so then he tells about what happened. Um, he kind of joins the team. Yeah, he joins so. the team. Yeah, so they all get on the ship. And then he says his employer told him about this. Right. How and find he out could, who it is. And then it's Tony Stark. Ba da da da. Boom, boom, boom. And he said, because he promised him or whatever a happy yeah. life with Vanessa. And, um, so, and he, and so they're 
teaming up. They go into the ship. They're driving. And Domino's talking to the three of them, talking about how we're going to destroy it and not give it to a military. Right. right. So she's like, everybody that's in on board. No exceptions. Right. So. She makes everybody raise their hand. Raise their hand and swear. And all of them swear. But then she's like, but then they all swear on it. And then she's like, white box, last chance, Foxy. And she agrees. Yes. So. They're, then they're all talking, and... The ship gets taken over. And the ship is taken over by Stark. Da, 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 da. He's betrayed him again. Again? Well, he's already betrayed her by sending Deadpool in there. Oh, oh yeah. And I'm like, is there another time? And no. so, um... He's taking control of the ship, and he sends his drone... His drone. Yep. And... I love this part. He's like, she, Domino's like, ladies and waities, <laughs> let's take the fuck. Because <laughs> Deadpool's name is Wade? Yes. Yeah. Ladies Wade and, Wilson. Ladies and waities. <laughs> ladies and waities. <laughs> I feel like we should use that in a sentence today. We don't know anyone named Wade, but... It doesn't it's... matter. We're going to use it anyways. Oh, I feel okay. like I feel like we're going to have to use it profusely. So they're fighting in the ship, and they tell, and she tells Diamondback to throw her diamonds. Yeah, basically Cause at, blow it up. Because at first she was just using her diamonds like claws and yeah. stabbing. Like, look, that is so cool. Yeah, I really and like Diamondback. She kind of reminds me of Dagger, how she can throw her daggers out. Yeah, and I she can has see her that. Daggers, yeah, except hers are diamonds. Right. The other ones are supposed to be light daggers. Correct. And so, um, they fight, and then they crash, the ship is going down, and so they're all holding on, and Deadpool's holding on to Diamondback's voice, yeah. of course. And so, that is how that one ends. Because the ship, like, explodes, and so all so of them are getting sucked all, out. So they're all getting sucked out, right. but they're hold it, trying to hold on. Right. And so... I want to read the next one. I really it's, like that story. It's probably one of my favorites. I like it. I really, really like it. It's a great team book. I really like all the characters are fun. The art's really good. And the art's very dynamic and kind of like uh, ener energetic. Like I feel like the people are moved and they're kind of positioned in different ways. And, yep. and it's really awesome. And you get to see all different kinds of people like yeah. the Avengers. And yeah. The different ones from different countries. Because um, White Fox is South is South is from South Korea, and then Natasha is Russian, and Atlas Bear and is Atlas Wakandan. Atlas Bear is Wakandan, mm -hmm. and so, then the three friends, and then Deadpool, and then Wadey. <laughs> Wadey. <laughs> so I, I really I agree. I really like this one. I probably give this one a five Neaters out of five. And Wadies. <laughs> and Wadies. and Wadies. Wadies and Wadies and Wadies. So Wadies. I would give it a five out of five. What would you give it? I'd give it a five out of five. I yeah. really like that one. And I don't feel like it's like it's not really uh, it's not really um, too adult. No. Like I don't feel like it's too inappropriate. It's kind of a fun book for you, I think. Yes. I really enjoy it just because of the, the strong female characters, the action, the superhero team, all that stuff that I love. Ladies and, and waities. Ladies and waities. Uh, so yeah, five out of five for me. Five out of five for me. Awesome. I like I like that we like this book. I like that we like this book together. All right. So the last one I'm going to do Major is X. Major X. That one looks like it has Deadpool in it, too. It does have Deadpool. So this was done by mm -hmm. Rob Liefeld. Mm -hmm. um, he is the penciler and the writer. Um, and I... I'm going to start off by saying I'm not a fan of Rob Liefeld, unfortunately. Um, is that I feel dead, like, Domino? Is hang on. Domino? Focus. That's Shatterstar. Yes. So... I'm not a huge fan of Rob Liefeld. Um, I feel like he's not a very kind person for the most part um, that I've read and that I've seen. And I'm not a fan. I, I used to like him until he kind of turned into a not nice person. So, but unfortunately. Have you met him? No, but I've read I've read many different things about how horrible he is. And, and like he just, he's not nice to other creators. He's not mm. nice. He trashes other people's work. He says he says not nice things, which I, yeah. I am not a fan of. Shatterstar. So, yes. His outfit looks 
like Deadpool 2. You take that. Okay. Since you're all up in my business. Oh, no, Good I job. turned it off. So, uh, it starts off with a, they're kind of, uh, What's everybody's the kind password? of. Um, everybody's kind of, uh, 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 falling down and he, uh, uh, you find out that uh, Cable's on the ground, and this this character Major X has got his foot on Cable's head, and so he's kind of stopping him. Oh my Who's, gosh! Who's that? Uh, McCoy. Uh, McCoy. Hank McCoy. No, it's not. It's not. It's a different one. Oh. So they, but it's it's like a beast-like character. It looks like Beast, yeah. but he's not. He has like he's this red gray. fur, gray and he's red. Gr- he kind of looks like. Colossus with fur. He's yeah. got that red. Yeah. And then it's gray. So yeah. he's like Colossus with fur. Yeah, kind of. I could see that. So they're all fighting. Um, it's a lot of fighting and exposition. Um, so then it cuts back to uh, Major X, kind of how he became to this time. Where are Because you? you find out that you have a time frame, or like they're time traveling. Yeah. He uses the word ex- existence. A thousand times and there's another word that starts with an X that he keeps using um, uh, so what he only X tenial like he keeps bringing he's it up. always using X I mean well, yes but like not because like that's the writing like Rob Liefeld literally uses this X tenial X X tenial existence constantly throughout these writings that sounds annoying it's super annoying I hate it I was like not a fan I'm so, like, just say the actual word. Don't we don't care. Well, and like I, you didn't have to use it a thousand times. Like we get what you're saying. Like you can use other pronouns or nouns or or whatever. So it's basically Major X is out on his bike. He's on this mother bike and he's riding around. All of a sudden, there's a uh, issue. So McCoy shows up to um, kind of. Uh, he's like, "Where have you been?" He goes, "Uh, oh, he goes, I've been out riding." Da 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 da. So then all of a sudden things start disappearing. So he's like, we can use our mother bike to go back. So he he apparently goes back in time to where Cable's at. Um, Wolverine shows up. They fight some more. Uh, more fighting, more fighting exposition. All of a sudden Deadpool shows up. Uh, more fighting, more fighting. What? But it's I'm not the Deadpool that. that is from our time. It's, the, it's a different Deadpool. And so... Um, then the Deadpool from our time shows up and fights this guy, this other Deadpool. And then all of a sudden there's two Deadpools fighting. And um, the one from not our time disappears. Out of the gray Wookiees. <laughs> and he so, still got humor, though. He mm, still got humor. You find out that Major X takes off his hat, his helmet, and he finds out that he is Alexander Nathaniel Summers. So he is Cable's son. That's the big reveal at the end. Bum, bum, bum. I just... If you like Rob Liefeld, you'll love this book. It is very Liefeldian. Um, it is definitely... Like <laughs> it is definitely a Rob Liefeld book. Um, art-wise, story-wise. Um, I, it's just not my thing. Like, I was not a fan of it. I don't think the art was really that great. Um... Some of the panels were really good. I really like, I feel like his art has gotten better than what it used to be. Um, but s- the story and wise. The cable, is, Cyclops, and Jean Grey Storm? Yes. And that was the other thing. Like, I wasn't, I, I, I feel like. So, so that's their grandson now. Right. So now. I, Boom. Yeah. Well, but I feel like you just redid that. Like, you just redid. And they both have gray hair. Well, he his is, well, his is kind of in dread, so. I, I don't know. Like, still white, though. It is white. It is gray. Like, is they? How old is he? I don't know. He, they just brought it. This is the first book with him in it. So, I'm just... And plus, he's from the future. So, he's from the future, but he's in the past. And it's like, oh, oh. didn't they just do this with Cable? Yes, that just is... Just redoing the story that you just did wait, with Cable? the one difference. No scar. No scar as I no, no virus. Scar. No virus. Virus. No technovirus. The, the oh. cable, that's what happened to Cable's eye and arm. It's because oh. he has technovirus. So Does Cable even have powers? Yes. So uh, I'm not a huge fan of this book. I don't think I'll pick up the next one just because I don't care anymore. I just feel like this whole story's been done before. This they he 
Rob Lightfield just brought in all these characters that he wanted to do. Like he brought in Deadpool, which is a character that he created. Um, but like, he, there's no purpose for him. It's like this weird Deadpool shows up, and then the new Deadpool shows up, and then it's just, it's just mm, a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things thrown in. I, I'm Who not so that? sure. I'm assuming it's supposed to be Storm, but I don't know. She, she wasn't in the book. She wasn't even in it. No, nope, she wasn't in the book. So and she's I, on the cover. I know. And I, I don't understand this whole thing. So not a huge fan of the Life Fields, but if you are, like I said, if you are a Life Field fan, I think you'll really, really like this book. It is very much him, very much something that he is going to do. So um, I hope people enjoy it. I, I did not. Um, so I would give it two out of five unicorn horns just because it's an X book. So I, it, I read it and I didn't, I didn't want to like burn it. So I wasn't mad that I spent the money. It was okay. So two out of five unicorn horns. I hope that he finds a place and that it's actually a really good book eventually at some point. But if this is the start off, then I, I don't think it's going to grow legs. Yeah. And run away and be super amazing. We'll see. You never know. Like, uh, for some reason, people love Lightfield's characters, so uh, maybe he'll he'll be able to uh, stick around and become something really amazing like Deadpool. But CG fight. CG fight. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. So um, that was all of the books that we are going to review for the week. But let's go ahead and do um, our pull list really quick, and then we'll go from Aren't there. Aren't those the books for the pull list? Yes, but I also have some digital ones. I'm, I'm very high tech. I have digital and I have book print. Yes, I know. Usually my book prints are the ones that I read all the time. The digital ones I download because I'm not for sure. Like Jim Henson's Storyteller Sirens that I downloaded for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay. What did you think? It was okay. It's a mermaid story. It's just like a fairy tale story. Um, I just really like mermaids. Yeah. So I've always had a mermaid interest in. Yeah, no. I, I think you should read it. It's kind of a fun interesting like, little book. There's a show on... Hulu called Sirens yes. on Freeform. Not like that. And the mermaid is not the main character. The main character is about this man, and it tells like this little fable. Do you I know, know what a fable is. Yeah, a fable. Yeah. Yeah. So like it just tells a story that has a. But it's it's interesting. But, I like the I like the little the the art's kind of interesting. It's colorful. But what so. I was saying about Siren is it's a really good book. I really like it. I know. Just I, I, like, I remember you telling me. Um, I'm I finished. Season two uh -huh. the other day, um, and it's really good. Holding tight yeah. onto it, huh? Yes. It was really good. Okay, I, I'll have to check it out sometime. You you have to read it sometime. No, I haven't. I, I have you know. finished Gifted? Yes, actually, I have. Well, I, there's new ones that came out, but I haven't watched the, the new season ones. two. You haven't finished season two completely. No, because there was new ones coming out still. What was the last thing that happened? We'll talk about it later. Can I finish this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, the storyteller, Sirens, I would say a three out of five unicorn horns. It's a cute little fable. If you're an old fan of this old old show, then it may be something that you would like. Um, it's kind of colorful fable stories. So, I enjoyed it. Hellchild, uh, Blood Money. This is the new um, her new miniseries. Um, she's from Xenoscope, and she is the daughter of Hades. Or sorry, daughter of Ares, but she's a vampire. Ooh. So yeah, and she yeah. like she has this like this knife that she can make into these big giant blade, and so she's kind of she's kind of an interesting character. Um, this particular book is kind of an interesting start off. I'm, I'm not for sure where it's gonna go with it. So I what do you think of it so far? I like it. I mean, three out of five unicorn horns is very average. Like, but it's still a fun book. Um, I'll read the second one and see. I think uh, as the series grows, I like the Zenoscope uh, books have. So I've started reading more and more, and I've actually really enjoyed them. And I have one thing. If have you, you bring up Sirens, I'm going to choke you to death it's on camera. Not, it okay. is not Sirens. Okay. It's uh, Justice League. Have you stopped reading it? Like you keep saying, you need to stop reading it. No. I read it again this week. I know. You keep saying it's horrible, and you're going to stop reading I it. I even told my comic book guy that I need to stop reading it. He, he's ready you to get my list. You had one job, Alan. One I job. I have to call my list a lot. Like, there's quite a few that I'm going to have to get rid of, because they're kind of getting horrible. So, all right. Stiletto, number one. Um, It is a, a crime novel. I, I feel like there wasn't anything really original about it. It was just a crime story. There was 
I mean, right. they've done it a thousand times. Um, there's like, you know, bad cops in there and they're trying to figure out all this stuff. And it's very, very, uh, very trope, uh, the police trope. And so I, I, I wasn't a fan. If you're a crime story person, I think you would definitely be a fan of this. The art's kind of interesting. Um, so uh, two out of five unicorn horns for me. Um, but I can see where other people would enjoy this book. Uh, what? Chicken's butt? Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? All right. We're going to have to choke her to death. Guess what? Goes. Hang on. Let me finish, baby. Siren. So creator of Inspires, number one, is... I don't, I don't know. It's a very amateur book. I'm not for sure what's going on with that one. I wish... It, I wish I could get my time back from that. So one out of five unicorn horns for that. Um, <laughs> a girl on the bay, issue number three. This one's kind of an interesting book. I didn't. I uh, read number one, and I didn't get to read number two, oh, so I read number three. That's that one that I can't read that I want to. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more adult and kind of inappropriate at points. So, uh, but it's it's definitely really dark. Uh, so. They have one more book that they're going to finish with, and so I'm curious to see where they're going to finish with this. So I'll definitely have to look out for number four and, and get through it. And um, Soldiers of Fortune, number two. Um, again, a very amateur book. Uh, I feel like it's very amateur writing, amateur art. Um, but if you're into that kind of, like, if you like that kind of feel to it, or, or if you like seeing something that's kind of, I don't know, uh, not quite mainstream, then that may be an enjoyable book, but I didn't care for it. So one out of five unicorns horns for that. Girl in the Bay, I would probably give a three out of five unicorn horns. Um, die number five. No. No, Sally's story is starting to get weirder and weirder, and I'm, I, they don't explain enough for me to keep up with it, so this may be the last issue. Although I say that a lot, don't I? You need <laughs> so that means I'll, you I'll need stick with it for another eight issues. <laughs> I know, I probably do. I might have to choke you on camera. <laughs> That's possible. So, die number five, two out of five unicorn horns. I wish it would get better, but it, I don't feel like it's going anywhere. Or And when they do explain things, they explain it in such an odd way that you can hardly understand what they're talking about because they use stuff that I don't think they, they understand that you don't know. Um, Amber Blake, number one, kind of a secret spy issue. Uh, I think it was actually like an oversized magazine kind of looking issue. I just read digitally. It's okay. It's kind of a spy, um, uh, almost a um, alias kind of feel. If you ever watched Alias, where they kind of recruit her, she's the she's she goes through all this turmoil and she's super smart and all this stuff. So they're gonna train her to be the secret agent. So I don't know. I may pick up issue two. I'm not for sure. If I don't pick up issue two, I don't think I will be upset that I missed it. But I. So three out of five unicorn horns, just because it was an average book. The art was pretty decent. The story was kind of intriguing a little bit, but nothing too crazy that it really was like, oh my gosh, I gotta want, I gotta read, I gotta read this. Um, Powers in Action, issue number two. That was a really fun book. It's very childish. It's uh, Art Balthazar, right? Right. So it's like it's it's very cartoony. It's very uh, cute. Did it's you an easy read, read. A My Little Pony book the other day. No, not this week. Because oh. when I went on Comicsology on Mom's iPad, it yeah. was on some My Little Pony book that's in there. And well, that's probably the one that uh, Kelly read last week. So, but I would give this three out of five unicorns. Stupid. I enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed the fun and the quirky kid stuff. It was kind of interesting, and um, and I like the characters are kind of fun. So it's it's a it's a it's a fun read if you get a chance. Um, Young Justice, number four. Uh, four out of five unicorn horns. I really love the art. I love the, the story. It's kind of fun. The characters are kind of fun. I really like what they're doing with this. I, I like where they're going with this. It almost seems like they're going through the old DC books and actually sticking with that history, which I really like. I know they did a lot of stuff with all the different timeline changes and stuff, but I like that this, this book kind of seems like picking up where the old, just, old, old Young Justice was. So... Um, Justice League, so convoluted and confusing. The only thing that I really like about this is, is George Jimenez's art. I love his art. It's so much fun. Um, but that, two out of five unicorn horns, and so that's about all I would give you it, just because of the art. It. I know. I really do. <laughs> Star Wars, this is another one I think I'll probably be giving up soon. Um, it's okay story. Why is it's it kind of fun. Marvel? 
Because Marvel's Marvel bought Steelers. Because they bought Disney. Steelers bought Disney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I am yanking on Yeah. My mind is blown. You're welcome. So, uh, it's finishing up the storyline. I think they're going to have maybe one or two more issues of the same storyline. Um, I really think they need to move on past this. Uh, it's been going on for quite a while. They went from having very short storylines to like one book, you know, one book was a storyline, one book was a storyline, one book was another completely different storyline, to going like to eight issues of the same story arc. And I'm just kind of like, okay, they need to move on. Um, Uncanny X Men is actually really good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. A lot of stuff happens I in this saw one. I um, and I almost picked it, but I chose Prisoner instead. Yeah, it was it was still good. You would you would have had a good book either way. Um, Cyclops loses an eye. Ooh, he actually becomes a Cyclops. <laughs> um, How's he supposed to shoot his lasers? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. My theory is, I think they should give him a ruby quartz eye. Oh, because that's what his glasses yeah. are made Wouldn't of. Yeah, would that be cool? Yeah. So, um, so anyways, he, he uh, Cyclops gets wounded. Uh, they uh, cure a couple of the uh, the other characters. So I really like this book. I like the characters are kind of fun. Um, the uh, uh, I enjoy who like who they brought on the team. It's kind of a weird team. Like they have such weird characters, but I really like them all. So uh, I really enjoyed this one. So four out of five unicorn horns for that. Um, Avengers No Road Home. Yes, this is their weekly Avengers book, and it's really good. I really like all the characters in it. I like the writing is really good. The story is a lot of fun. They actually have a good villain. So I really I really like this one. Uh, four out of five unicorn horns. Uh, almost five out of five unicorn horns. I, the only thing that I wish is that the same artist would carry on, but with a weekly book, I'm surprised that they have kept similar artists as it is. So yeah, yeah all in all, pretty good week. Uh, I didn't well, hate reading a lot of them, so that's always a good thing. No, not yet. So, um, hey, that is our list for the week. Um, if you get a chance, please like, share, and subscribe. We would love to uh, hear from you. Um, like I said, I've always wanted to start a conversation, so the more people we can get, the better that conversation will be. Uh, if you like any of the books, if you agree, we would love to hear from you. If you don't agree, we would love to hear from you. Um, if there's something that we're not reading, then I would love to uh, start that because I already read 8 million books, so why not add on an extra one? Uh, but until then, I think uh, those are some fun reviews, uh, some fun books that you can check out, and, and we hope your pull list is full. Bye!